Hello, I am uh, Blas Pyrie, and I'm going to make a presentation about uh, the creative processes in visual music. So uh, I will analyze some examples of uh, my work, but try also to set a more, a more general uh, description of uh, the processes in visual music. So uh, I'm going to talk first about uh, my specific uh, background, which is uh, music and, uh, in particular, electroacoustic uh, music, uh, so, or tape music. And tape music, uh, at uh, its core, it's about recording or synthesizing sound, which you record, you edit, you process, maybe you apply effects, and then you create sequences that you will record and this becomes the new raw material on which you can you know, cut, splice, create rhythms, etc. But uh, the fact is that uh, it is the sound is the raw material and it is the processes of um, transformation that uh, creates uh, maybe the rhythms or uh, I don't know, the general texture. And uh, somehow I have applied this, uh, this mentality, this approach to uh, also the creation of uh, music. So uh, this would be to transform the image also as a raw material. And in this sense, it's very different from uh, classical animation where you have uh, drawings or image synthesis that uh, comes from scratch here. I always uh, depart from uh, an image which uh, has been recorded and on which I uh, apply some processes. So basically there are some processes that, time that are linear in time. So for instance, when you change the color or the luminosity, the light, and also when you make a blur or you superpose two images, so uh, you don't change them in time. But there are sometimes non-linear processes, which are like multi-exposure, motion blur, and things that uh, kind of uh, change in time uh, when, uh, when they are applied. But also, there is some uh, transformation and that I use a lot. So for instance, if you change the color or the light of an image, it's not like a color correction when you are doing like a classical uh, uh, film, but uh, you apply it in a manner that transforms the image and creates, I don't know, a new uh, light or a new uh, shape, etc. So any process that uh, is time linear, motion blur, uh, blur, for instance, can be also changed in time. And then it becomes a temporal uh, evolution of the, of the image. So let's talk about, uh, for instance, uh, evolution in time. And uh, it's inter interesting to see the chronophotographic. So uh, on top, we can see the uh, photographs of uh, Mybridge, who, uh, so in this case, it's a variation of the uh, new descendant des escaliers, so a nude descending the, the stairs. And these are different photographs in different times of the process. And we can see here on the, on the left that um, uh, in this case, uh, it's a photograph uh, superposition, so this is multi-exposure, uh, where all the uh, uh, processes in time have, have been overlaid, superposed. So this is a multi-exposure, and uh, we have also the famous uh, painting by uh, Marcel Duchamp, which refers to this process. But all this is uh, static in time. And here, for instance, we have another pioneer of uh, chronophotography, 
which is Etienne Jules Marais. And uh, here we have also the trajectory of the image that uh, is recorded and uh, stays in, uh, in time, in, um, in one uh, picture. So it transforms the picture. And here uh, I would like to, to show so something new, which is uh, an example of uh, Norman McLaren, who is really uh, someone very important in abstract uh, visual music or abstract uh, animation, but also ap applied uh, different processes to uh, video dance or uh, dance film. And in particular here, he applied kind of the multi-exposure to the image. So in this case, we have uh, the picture of uh, two dancers and uh, this image is overlaid. So this is in post-production because you cannot do it in production. So uh, he uh, applied uh, over and over again with a delay uh, the exposure of, uh, of the image in order to create these shapes that evolve in time and that uh, uh, yeah, give some trails that reflect the movement. So it transforms, it creates a new image and this image uh, is also dependent on the, on the time. So this was done uh, like uh, by hand, uh, really taking the film and superposing it. And now we can do it with uh, digital uh, digital uh, tools, but still it's a quite complex uh, process to, to do. And uh, the second uh, point that I would like to talk about is uh, music and image. As I always do the image and the music, uh, it's uh, always uh, very important to know if we are doing music for the image or adapting the image to the music. In any case, it's uh, usually easier to, when we are doing abstract uh, visual music, to adapt uh, the image to the music because the music has really a perceivable structure and has a temporal logic, a temporal structure uh, that uh, anyone can perceive. And uh, when we do the other way around, for instance, like in in narrative cinema, we create uh, the montage, the editing, and then we apply the music uh, to it. Uh, but uh, when we do it for abstract uh, images, there is not this perception of a temporal uh, structure. So uh, that's essential. So uh, in general, music has uh, applies kind of a semantic and psychological aspect to the to the ensemble uh, as uh, for instance it can be joyful or dramatic neuter i don't know and also uh, the fact that the music for instance is electronic or uh, instrumental or it's a voice it will change very much how we perceive the image so it will be either a kind of an electronic image or or on the contrary, something more human. Uh, so uh, it's uh, really essential. And uh, the most important uh, part of this relation is uh, the temporal congruence. So uh, music uh, has uh, often or not uh, phrases uh, and can have a directionality. Uh, and uh, it can force the image to adapt or to, I don't know, absorb this uh, structure. Also, it's important if we have a music which is very minimalist and which is only like ping, pam, pam, uh, separate notes, or if we have a very complex music with a lot of textures or a rich uh, harmony. Uh, so often animation, abstract animation takes very, um, like very minimalist uh, music. And on the contrary, I try to create uh, complex music and create a complex uh, image uh, for it. Um, so the global 
aspects of the music and the image that uh, will make it uh, work together or, or not, or, or have an opposition, uh, can relate to the intensity, the harmonicity, the timbre of uh, the music, as opposed to the color, the color palette, the light uh, intensity, the density of movement, etc. in the in the image. And also, as I was mentioning, there is this question of uh, a rich and organic image or music versus something minimalistic, uh, which are separate notes and uh, simple shapes. So uh, now I would like to uh, analyze some examples of uh, my pieces to understand uh, some of uh, these processes. Uh, that uh, was selected at Monti Raya. Uh, there is uh, music made of a lot of uh, little notes that uh, kind of echo and uh, that create uh, this rich texture of uh, little things. And it is not so much corresponding to little events, but it's uh, more to this uh, complex uh, kaleidoscopic uh, uh, film. So in this case there are a lot of mirrors that create uh, these, uh, these uh, shapes uh, that uh, have uh, a lot of uh, small uh, textures. And these mirrors evolve, so they create also a movement, like uh, if a camera was passing over these uh, shapes that are also evolving. So this is an example of using the uh, mirror, the kaleidoscopic effect, uh, as a way to create new, sh new shapes, but also to make new movements. So I have made some experiments by changing the music and maintaining exactly the same image. So for instance here we have a music by Brahms, a piano ballad, which is slower and somehow gives uh, a more uh, slow feeling to the to the image and also we don't see anymore so clearly all these uh, little uh, events and pieces but more the general structure have made another variation of the music with the violin concerto of Brahms. So here we don't have any more events, but it's a long continuing melody. So in this case we see the long evolution and we don't see any more so clearly the small events that, uh, that happen. So it kind of develops the long phrases, the long structure.
And finally, I have used an electroacoustic music, Jukurpa, uh, and uh, this is a dark music with a lot of uh, uh, low-pitched uh, textures. And in this case, the same uh, image becomes more uh, dark or maybe more uh, aggressive. So in this case of yellow and blue, so the colors refer to the flag of Ukraine as um, an homage or an encouragement to this country. Uh, I have used a music which has uh, like very clear phrases uh, with a lot of uh, directionality and a lot of uh, clear musical events. And, uh, the image has been adapted really uh, with a very tight uh, synchronicity uh, as an experiment. And uh, in this case I have uh, used uh, an image, so the, there was elements in movement, and I have uh, also made a camera movement, and th then I have made a subtraction with a delay of uh, the layer of the image by uh, by itself. So it's only the shapes, the silhouette that uh, remains when the object is in movement. So I have worked uh, on it, uh, made some kind of uh, delays, uh, so some multi-exposure. I have saved it and uh, then I have applied this, um, these um, kaleidoscopic uh, effects that also evolve and add new movements and create uh, new shapes that appear and disappear. So that's made with the kaleidoscopic effect in combination with the original movement. And then uh, there is a very clear uh, work of editing to create uh, this uh, synchronicity between sound and uh, image. So this was my second piece of uh, abstract uh, works uh, and uh, here what's interesting is that uh, both the image and the music, the sound, are evolving slowly and continuously. There are no cuts and no specific events and uh, uh, actually it's uh, harder to make a a congruence, a synchrony between the music and the image when you have to really make a evolution, a continuous evolution. Because when you have clear cuts, whatever you put, it works. So this is actually more challenging. In this case, the raw image was uh, uh, a still life and the movement is made with uh, the camera 
So it's uh, slow movements that go progressively from one part to the, to the other. And in this case, I used a very shallow depth of uh, field. That means that uh, there is just a small part in focus and the rest is out of focus. It becomes progressively more blurry. So uh, this makes that uh, there is an evolution also of the textures, but always taking this uh, kind of uh, organic but blurry nature of, uh, of the image. And then there is a lot of uh, superpositions, uh, subtraction, etc., and transformation in, uh, in post production to create uh, the general and final shape. So in uh, this case, I really wanted to study the concept of energy in music and uh, in the image. So I had made a, an, an image with a lot of uh, movement and a lot of energy. Uh, so first I edited the image, and, but then I had to make uh, music to have really a progression and to kind of uh, make a structure for this uh, image. So a lot of movement and uh, energy in, the, in this image. In this case, the music is really more dramatic with uh, low sounds and uh, an evolving uh, harmony. And uh, this gives this dramatic uh, effect, maybe too much to the, to the image. So in this case, the image was made before and the music was created for the image. And I have found that uh, the way I made uh, the, the image uh, was not a very structured uh, way. By adapting the music and creating a music that uh, kind of uh, uh, stresses, underscores the moments of the image, uh, I have made something <laughs> that actually even uh, underscores the lack of, uh, of a structure. But it's still a piece that uh, is interesting. One thing that is in process and I would like to achieve is to have longer uh, abstract uh, pieces. 
So for that matter, I think that uh, I need to depart from a structured uh, music. So I'm using a, a music with uh, with voice and uh, uh, complex uh, evolutions that has kind of a, a structure. And I am trying to to see if I can get uh, the image to follow and to absorb this structure and to create a longer piece, uh, even if it is abstract. So that's one of my main goals. So thank you for your attention and uh, well this was a short uh, explanation of uh, my processes uh, of uh, creating music and image.